You are now now listening listening to the Inner Inner Circle Circle Podcast Podcast Network. Fuck you. All right, it is 11.55 a.m., and it's not Friday, but guess the fuck what? Who fucking cares? Because I have a beast of a man. I have Matt Vincent here. I'm talking about two-time Highlands champion game. This guy is a monster. I just watched his YouTube, and I, and I watched it maybe about a couple months ago. I've been diving deep into your podcast. I've been diving deep into what you do. And you know what? You've actually inspired me to do quite a bit. I, I got things in motion for myself. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is because everything that, that you talk about, everything you speak, is, is entrepreneurship. It's working for yourself. It's being a better yourself. It, it's everything that, that what we should be doing as Americans, you know what I'm saying? What we should be doing as people. Yeah, and, and humans is the, the more t- term I'm interested in. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, and it, that, that's the thing. It's like um, everyone's trying to do something better and greater for themselves that most people never really see or do. And that's what completely drew, like, I'm, I'm all in on your podcast. I'm completely fucking deep in right now. And the thing is, is then one of the reasons why, because I do motivation, I'm, I'm a motivational person, but I, I speak on the level of the every man, every dad thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my podcast is the angry dad. But the thing is, is as a father, I've gone through so many things in my life that are fucking insane and fucking crazy. I'm talking about, I've gone through two divorces. I got four kids. I got kids from different mothers. I, I've been down in the dumps. I've been shitted on. I fucking drank myself into a stupor and I fucking hit rock bottom, but I've gotten myself back up and I've, I've created something for myself, a brand. And that's what I liked about motivation. And that's what you're doing here. You, you've done something that, you know, you, you've gone through pain, you've gone through these these great accolades in your life, and yet you're still striving to do best. And that's what I'm here to talk about. That's what I'm here to speak with you about. I mean, the, what's the other option? Being complacent and being like, we made it and fucking hang out. I, you know, I don't I don't get that. Um, I could feel myself slipping into that at one point. And then when that wake up call had happened, uh, you know, that really generated with um, my father passing. Um, was kind of the first step in me realizing, I don't know, that I needed to change whatever the thing was. Uh, At that point, I'm 26, uh, 2014, and relatively living a normal life. I'm I'm still doing, you know, it's it's funny to say that. I'm living a normal life, but I'm not. I'm not. If I look back at it, I'm not, man. I'm I'm still doing the Highland Games. I'm, I'm just starting to travel as a professional athlete. Uh, I, I've won a world championship and <clears throat> my life life is very normal, but I still have this exceptional thing, which was me getting to compete or I don't know that exceptional is the right term, but I had a thing that I'm obsessed about that I had to do. And so whenever that went away and then I realized like I didn't. I didn't know a purpose. I didn't know what to be anymore. I didn't have, you know, I never, I never equated having the identity of being a Highland game guy. That wasn't my thing. Um, yeah, I remember saying a lot that like, this shit's not like my PRs aren't going to be on my tombstone. This is a really rad thing I get to do. It's not who I am, but where the real fucking test came was when I wasn't able to be athletic anymore from injury. Now, being inside a machine that I can't fucking operate, that's not one I was prepared for in any way. Um, I was very lucky to get out of it and only have to deal with it for a short run. But as someone who damn sure built who I am and my confidence and my ability to focus on a goal and work hard and understand that it's the fucking 10 years of just laying into something every day of obsession. That's what gets you to where you're going. That it's, it's not this short term thing and it's never going to be. It's 10 years of just progress of not stopping, of constantly trying to figure it out the same way strength training was. And so once I, once I'd lost the ability of the athletic side, 
I just started applying all of those rules to everything else of like, where can I get better? How can I push it? If it's 1%, it's worth doing. Like it's, it's worth trying. And for me, the motivation was like, I know I'm dying, right? Like that's it. Like time's fucking ticking, dude. Tick tock. And being really aware of that uh, and then getting hurt and having that ability taken away it just got really dark. I, I, I couldn't see myself riding the fucking clock out in that state. And so now that I got out of it and now that it's been able to compound and build and work and grow and do it, like I just want to share all the fucking strategies that worked for me because I understand it fucking comes. I also understand that I'm so fortunate. I have a plethora of resources. And a lot of people don't. And so trying to share as much information that's helped me as possible is is really what I want to do. You know, and that's exactly why I love listening to your show. And, and at this moment in time, that's why I wanted to really talk to you because this is something that most people don't understand is like, there are resources. There's ways to, to, there's people that think the same way that we think there's people that, that, that are gone through the same situations that we're going through. And the thing is, is like, you know, it's understanding what you can do. It's understanding what your passion is. It's understanding that you can, you can, you know, push through what happens that's traumatic in your life. There's a lot of things there's, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, but the thing is you got to learn how to manage them and you've learned to manage them. You've learned to deal with them head on and, and push through and it, it, it's so crazy because like you when I watch your YouTube video and your movie on the documentary of you doing this mountain hike. Uh, and, pe- yeah, it, it, and people don't understand how hard something like that is. That's an, it, it, it's literally an all they thing. But you pushed yourself through. You persevered. You know, I know you, you had the, the hip surgery. I believe you had the knee surgery. And, you know, just just to go through those kind of surgeries and still push through that kind of work and that 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 much effort to to just show people that you can do these things. These things are possible. I'm, you know, I know you're having pains and you've gone through these things and it's just so like inspiring that that's why I want people to understand. You know, what I'm saying? I want it, my audience, those who are seeing, look, if you want to see something different you want to see through the eyes of somebody that's going that's been through this guess what i'm going to put the link in the video in the notes so you guys can check this the fuck out because it it's crazy you know what i'm saying like like i said you just watching what you've done and what you're doing it inspired me to even start my own online business i you you have many but you have hate brand you have habit coffee you know what i'm saying you you have your your men's group and like these are all resources it's, it's, that it's not a men's group it's just a group yeah, it's just you just a group. But, it, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that like, you know, it, it's building community, understanding that community around you. And, and like I, I like seeing that grow. I like seeing that there because it's like, you know, I, um, in, I'm in California. I'm in the Bay Area and I always feel like a fish out of water. You know what I'm saying? Just just yeah. my sheer size, the, who I am, the, the place that I'm at, it, you know, I stick out like a sore, th- a sore fucking thumb. And the thing is, is when I can see like people like you, I can relate to. And I'm just like, man, this is fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Then even to just to get you on my podcast, I'm just really overjoyed with that because it just it just shows those milestones of stuff going on. Dude, look, I, I've I've been so fortunate to have rad guests and friends of mine be guests on my podcast that that I really owe a lot of fucking exposure to everything, man. And so for me. The confidence that came from those guys saying yes they would be on my show like i know how that feels and to withhold that maybe spark from someone else feels like a real cunty thing to do and so like yeah man i i back people that are trying to build their own thing me not doing shows is fucking counterintuitive to me saying i back people doing their own thing like That's i it. Fucking believe in it man i i, I really do and you know, for me, I've, I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by people who've done impossible shit. Like, I've got to see it firsthand. I'm enough of a cynical asshole that, like, I didn't come from a life that wanted to go to the gym and go to the club. I came from fucking bars and bands and bouncing and strip clubs and doing shit like that. Like, I wanted to be in that group anyway. I didn't want to fucking hang out with them, which was 
fine for me. But I understand now that a bunch of people that operated in those realms are getting their shit together at 30 and didn't do any of the physical stuff I did and have no fucking idea how to start, even what a plan is of how to take care of themselves, other than all the people they know don't, and they don't know who to look for. And so like, look, man, if, if you're looking for a place that isn't Gold's Gym and you're looking for a, a voice of weirdo that's willing to do all the things, I'm happy to help. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like uh, that help right there. And just, you know, because I can only imagine how many people reach out to you that are trying to just seek that kind of advice, seek that 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 kind of motivation, that spark to start something. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's it's something that that, like I said, I've um, I've and like I'm just as just examples from the stuff that I've done. I've I've literally been on Instagram since Instagram started, and I try to put my foothold into the fitness business. Um, back in 2016, I literally got ran over by a forklift. Guy was going full speed, wasn't looking, crushed my back, crushed my shoulder, stopped my bodybuilding career, and you know started a whole whole other thing of of issues and problems. But the thing is, is I still wanted to create something. I still wanted to do something and I actually got into podcasting this prior. I think this episode right here is going to be like five thirty two. So I've done f- over five hundred and thirty. Yeah, exactly. I've, 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 and it's, you know, my, my, po- a lot of my podcasts are just short and fast and to the point because I want, I have a set of motivations that I want to get and that I want people to understand. And you know, just even back in October, I, I literally had a full, I had got caught COVID, had a full blown hundred percent blockage blood clot, had to have surgery so fast that I was awake while they were doing the surgery and they were playing raining blood from Slayer in the background for me. That's a you know very interesting I'm, life experience, my friend. Oh yeah. I'm no, no, no. Yeah. About it not have it. And then that, that's the thing. That's why I started gravitating towards you, your podcast and, and listening to what you have to say, because the thing is, is you, I've gone through these hard things, but I never let it get me down. I never let it stop me. I never let it get in the way. And that's what I want people to understand. Like when people see your situation, seeing what you've gone through and, and understand that you're conquering these things in your life. And when you're going through these things, it really fucking helps to see other people doing it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, I, I always, like I said, I always refer myself as just the everyday person. I'm a father, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, I'm a sister. But if I can make it and do it, you can too. And that's the same example that you're putting out there for people. And look, man, I, I think I think that there is a, a time where people are having kind of an awakening, right? Where things are a little weird the last two years and a lot of folks in in our age range have up to this point essentially done the thing they were supposed to do and that was go to school and do the sports and then whatever that was and then get a job and then meet meet a person procreate start families do all that and then land this job and then you realize that that like all of a sudden you're in this routine that that can't be stopped and you're not 100% sure how how we've got here so far, other than it was in motion and you're more of a passenger than at the wheel. And I just want people to understand that they're at the fucking wheel. And that if you want to do something else, if you want to try something else, there's ways to go about it and figure it out. And no matter what it is, it takes time. It's the same shit of how I tell people to get strong. And the way that I talked about it in seminars was it's really fucking easy. We don't even have to go over programming. I need you to bench squat, deadlift, and overhead press moderately heavy once a week for a decade. Don't get hurt. And so that goes to anything. Like, man, you want to be a runner? Run a little bit. You want to fucking be someone who understands about cars or be a mechanic or have a hobby? Get started. It's going to take 10 years. You need to be bad at it. Enjoy being bad at it. Start finding new places to be uncomfortable and get out of your routine and find some fucking growth. Like, yeah, no, no, I completely understand it. Is that then that growth in the gym? That's how it works. You have to have a stimulus to adapt to, right? So if you fucking want growth in your life, better find some fucking stimulus. 
Yeah, you, it, and that's the thing is it, that stimulus, it, it's what kicks everything off in life. And it, the, the, the stimulus that, like I said, I'm always constantly working towards myself, working towards my goal, working towards what I do. And I always try to show it as an example, even for my kids, because I want them to understand and see that my dad is trying, he's putting forth and he's making things happen. And I always try to use it as an example and everything that I post, everything that I do, everything that I show is like, look. Getting out of that comfort zone will make shit fucking happen. You know what I'm saying? And, and that stimulus, and you know, and regardless with with your health, once you start working and learning to work on those things, people see that, and it, and, it, and it fucking grows. You know what I'm saying? It, it it translates into so many different fucking things in your life that that that's. It, I'm always constantly wanting people to see that and understand that. You know, the progression of life is getting out of that fucking that comfort zone, that routine you were just talking about. And even with my routine, I was stuck in my routine. I right now have a great fucking job. I have a retirement. I have a 401k. I have a pension, but I'm still wanting more. I don't want to have a regular job. I'm trying to take myself out of that position and do something that I want more. You know what I'm saying? I've literally worked myself into positions where I'm actually doing this podcast and doing other podcasts and, and working on towards, towards something that's completely different than what I've done. I'm so physically labor driven. And now I'm more sitting in front of a computer, fucking really putting in this fucking work. Yeah. It's, it's part of it. And I mean, the only advice I have is just commit to progress. And like, what I mean by that is anything's fucking possible, right? So where I'm currently at, this was not the plan. And like, I, I want to be clear when you're making plans for progress, like this is not what I planned. I didn't plan to have an apparel business. I didn't plan to have a podcast. I didn't plan to do any of this shit. I was obsessed with throwing and I was so obsessed with throwing that I started making videos. And I was so obsessed with throwing and making videos that I decided to write a book to tell other people how to throw. And then as I realized people were interested in some of the other things I was saying besides throwing, that's helped drive the creation of the world I built. <laughs> Is I've listened to what people were interested in. I didn't just fucking force feed them a thing. And I allowed growth to go that way too. So it went from that. Like I'm like, I can't go back 10 years from now to 2012, right, where I've just started competing in the Highland Games. I work in the petrochemical industry, and my attitude at that point is things are great. I make good money. Um, I'm getting to travel and compete. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. Like, I'll, I don't have any complaints at all because um, I still had a thing I was obsessed about because I had an obsession. And when I got hurt in 2016, and all I could see, like, man, I could immediately see the rest of the path laid out, that it was going to be the normal stuff. Like, no offense to anyone with whatever me not liking doing stuff that other people like doing. No, but I don't want to yeah, I don't wanna go fucking hang out at kids' baseball games on weekends. <laughs> yeah. No fucking desire. I don't want to go to kids' birthday parties. I don't want to go to some obligated function of any kind. And so if that's your thing, I want you to want to go to those things. But I don't have to go. That's that's my philosophy on it. Yeah, it should be everything. Do what you please. Yeah. I, I don't fucking owe you the obligation of going to a thing that I don't want to be at. I appreciate it. I'll never ask you to do one of the same. <laughs> And so like having that accountability with, with myself of what I want and who I want to be and what I'm no longer going to tolerate going forward has cleared up so much time and RAM that I can continue to focus and push myself. But it's a fucking choice. Like it's not comfortable. <laughs> I mean, if, if I, I, I thought about that this week and if I had a chance to talk to myself from 10 years ago, and fuck that whole, what advice would you give? I wouldn't yeah. give him that. I wouldn't give him any advice. But even at 28 there, you know, he doesn't know that anything's possible yet. And that's 10 years ago. And if I told him what his 2022 year and calendar and life looks like, 
I'm a fucking liar. No chance. There's fucking no chance of it. Telling him, hey man, in the next 10 years, you're going to win two world championships, have total knee replacement, get a divorce, move across the country, start over, uh, be the happiest you've ever been, still have a great relationship with the people that you were friends with from your former life, making more money, doing better things. You have a fucking travel show planned with Indian motorcycles this year. Like, yo, you're full of shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I can't fucking tell people things are impossible. I know too goddamn well. Yeah. And if I know it, then that's a fact. I've seen it too many times to pretend it isn't. And I refuse to lie to myself. If I'm fully accountable, I don't lie to me. That's it. You know, like I said, it, it, even in my account, growing up, I, I grew up in the in the, the one of the worst neighborhoods you can grow up in. I lived dead center in the middle in, in, in the Bay Area. And, you know, the statistic for me, and this is not from my parents, this is not from my family, anything like that. It's either I'm in jail for life or I'm dead at 18. That's just how and what I grew up in and what I was doing at that moment in time. And even if I were to go back then and tell myself how I ended up now fucking blown away because I'm no longer in that situation. I'm no longer that situation. I am like complete 180 different fucking person. And it's so crazy because like, even if I wanted to give myself advice, I couldn't because I wouldn't want to change what happened in the lessons that I learned. Exactly. Right. I'm very happy with where I'm at, which means I had to eat that shit. Yep. And I got fucking plenty of it. Oh yeah. You you know, what I decided was, I won't do any of the things that caused me to eat that shit last time again. Yep. Um, Being more aware and being more conscious of it. And dude, even, even for you, right? Like, so, you know, the young version of you that, that thinks those are his only two options. And so getting a job, being comfortable, having a house and, and being financially stable at some point, that was your absolute fucking dream Yeah. and impossibility. And you did that. Yep. Now you're at such a point that you have enough awareness to go. What else? That and that's and that's it right there. Good enough. It's it's not that I'm unhappy. It's what else can we do? We have time. Let's fucking go. Let's grow. You know what I'm saying? And that that that's exactly like what the words that you used in the last three of your podcasts were growth. This is no longer is this is acceptable. But I can do more. I can be more. And just by using those words, I've been telling myself and doing podcasts that it's like, I understand that I've I've reached what my goal is, but that goal is no longer what I'm chasing. I want to do something more. Like even right now, I'm going to a stand-up comedy event. I'm a fucking gangster from the hood now doing stand-up fucking comedy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just starting out. And yet I still got booked a gig. Yo, I dig it, man. And look, that type of shit, that getting up there and being uncomfortable, you and like doing stand up and doing open mic stuff, what people don't get, yo, that's the fucking reps. Yeah. That's the choosing to walk against that part of your brain that says, fuck this, get the fuck out of here. This is uncomfortable. Everyone's looking. We're going to fail. And you say, fuck you, get on the mic and we do the job. That's it. I'm you all fucking in. Fucking perform. That's exactly it. That's the confidence that you build from doing uncomfortable shit is we perform when I fucking say so. That's it. You know, it, 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 and it goes all back to training. Cause like when I train, I used to like push myself. I thought I was a badass in the gym. And then I had two like bodybuilder friends that were just like, Hey, no, we're going to train you. Put me in the fucking ringer for six months. I ain't never threw up so much training with these. And it, they taught me how to get out of the comfort zone. They would hold me while, and squat me while I had my weight on my shoulders and to force me to do my reps and to push through. And because of that, I was like, I can fucking do anything. And then once I had that mentality, it's like, I'm out of the fucking comfort zone. The comfort zone is, it's like, I can do more now. Also, because of your injury, you're on borrowed time and you know it. Yeah. Yo, you didn't have any of this. You, it was all gone. Yeah, it was all gone. All oh, yeah. fucking, you know what I'm saying? Flash before yeah, my dude. eyes. You yeah, know, dude, I fucking get it, man. And I, I get it, right? And like, even with Fragile, uh, you know, the first night we watched that, um, we, we, we happened to be in Montana with some friends. And uh, my 
incredible video producer, Brant, has been working on this thing for like six months. And so finally, it's, you know, it, it's time. I'm like, hey, man, we, we need to see it. We need to see yeah. it. So we're at a friend's palace and we decided we're going to watch it. Um, I, I haven't seen anything that he's done of the edit. I, I know what I filmed. Yeah. That's it. And uh, we sit down to watch it. And one, I'm super fucking stoned. <laughs> uh, which well, it's a good way to, it's, it, to <laughs> learn to watch things. <laughs> it isn't an excuse of anything. I just mean I am way present and I'm. <laughs> I'm an emotional fucking mess anyway. So, dude, this thing starts. And for those who haven't watched it, like this flashback to when I was hurt and I can see my face and I haven't seen those clips in a long time. And I've, I know that I consistently fought forward, but I'd never seen all the bad times together. Yeah. And I can look at that guy's face now and I'm like, yo, he wasn't okay. Like, I feel really bad for him. And, like, also, thank you for whatever you fought through through that because I'm really happy here. And so even having that own empathy back for me during the dark times and fighting, um, when I got to do the run, you know, that was the point of it again. It was this reassurance to myself that, like, I'm not fucking fragile anymore, man. I can take damage. And like what that unlocks as far as confidence in myself to try new things. And so, you know, we, we watched that movie and I'm fucking a mess crying about it. And, uh, you know, my friends didn't know that side of the story. I've been friends with them since yeah. uh, I was hurt. And so anytime that we've ever done something and like we go, I ran a 5k or something up there or we wake surfed and like, I'll get, emotional afterwards and like i i think it's always been like ah oh, matt's matt's just an emotional guy like he's cool with it yeah but they don't realize that it's it it is that i'm very present back with how i felt when i knew i was defeated and that i wouldn't ever do any of that again and then i had made okay with it yes fuck that voice that accepted it yep no 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 i can i i, I hit on that level because just like you said it's like a. You know, growing up, I had to be like this stone cold, like, like no emotion, no fear. I'm, you know, like at, at, at my age back in high school, I, I'm six, five now, but I was six, one in high school. I was, you know, two, uh, 230 pounds. And, you know, but when I was 10, I was five eleven, bro. I was a freak growing up. So that's why I say I stick out like a fucking sore thumb regardless. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not just like tall and skinny. I'm fucking just thick. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know and and we had to be those guys that ran the block ran the hood and so i grew up with this thought of like i never show i never accept i fucking bottle it down i push it down it doesn't matter how i feel and you know after my injuries even after you know after the heart attack it's like no i'm fucking find myself very emotional and you know working on that that poor that that mental aspect and mental health of like really dealing with oh it's okay to feel it's okay to say i love you it's okay to say how i'm sad it's okay yep. you know and so it's like going through these processes and and it's just like you know the, the emotion you feel it's like it's overwhelming because there's no there's no flow to it it's just it's damned and then it's opened you know it's it's kind of um it, it, it's it's almost like dealing with produce but with trauma and emotion and feelings and all those type of things. Right. And if you're not going to process it and deal with it when you get it and you bury it, it's just going to ferment and get gross in the bottom. And you're going to have to deal with it when it's awful. Yep. It's been boiled down and rotten instead of like, while it's fresh and being able to be like, yo, I'm fucking sad or I'm fucking angry. And it's an and, and, and understanding that you are that, someone else didn't make you shit and and be okay to be like yo i'm just fucking angry that's okay i'm gonna move on from it guess what it's gonna pass just like it has every other fucking day in the rest of my life and so even with that maybe just hey i'm really angry right now i'm gonna go eat it for a little bit but i'm not gonna pretend to not be angry yes 
you know, then that's the thing too, is like not being angry and having those, because, you know, I'm very, uh, I'm very, um, I can't understand like the word, like people can feel emotion and I've never been that person. So I don't know how to read a room. So I'm always been the person. If you don't tell me how you feel or what you're thinking, I'm just going to be okay with whatever the situation is because I've been burying those emotions, those feelings so well that I've completely like blocked that radar portion. But now that I find myself like dealing with actual like feelings and emotions and really trying to be empathetic with people, it's like slowly starting to seep in. So sometimes I feel it, sometimes I don't, but you know, it's just one of those growing situations that, that most men are traditionally trained to just be like, no, no, you you, you don't. And and the the truth is you should almost treat everyone like a scared kid. Like, because if someone's reacting to you, like, like just treat them with that level of, of kindness. Yeah. It's a really fucking easy way to go. Cause, um, you know, uh, you know, a book that targets a lot of really interesting thoughts on this type of stuff is, uh, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. If, if you, you guys haven't listened to that or checked into it, I highly recommend it. There's, there's just a lot on there that, you know, one of the four agreements is don't take anything personal. And that people's reaction has very little to do with you and has more to do with the the collective of their existence. And being able to accept that and then understand that yours is the same. And once you have an awareness of that, what do you decide to do with that information? Do you keep it? Because then it's a choice. And I like choices. So the more I can be aware of, the more choices it gives me, the more freedom I have to decide what I want to do. I'm definitely going to have to look into that book. You know, and like I said, I'm always trying to at least add to the collective powers of what's going on. And, you know, it's, it's just like I, I want people so desperately to, like, understand that they're, it's OK to be a man, but it's also OK to to be sensitive. You know what I'm saying? It's OK, because the majority of my listeners base is it's pretty much all men. My, you know, my wife does listen to my podcast, but and, a, you know, a few other females that I do know, but the, mo- the majority of mine is men and. And the reason it, that that I always speak on this because it's okay. I, I'm going through these processes and stuff like that. And just how you're speaking about it, I want people to understand that these are the things that are okay. It's okay to to accept the emotions, accept the feelings, and deal with them. Not just put them off. Just don't feel like you need to blow them off. But it's like, well, look, it, fucking emotionally unintelligent fucking babies aren't cool dudes at all. I don't want to fucking hang out with you. Exactly. <laughs> it's fuck. the fucking truth. <laughs> it's the fucking truth. No fucking interest. I have no interest in that or dealing with people who are into posturing. Like, I, I, I just don't give a shit. I don't have time for it. I have zero interest in people or things in my life that create drag. That's it. And when that drag happens, some people don't understand that you're doing it. And some people just don't care that they're doing it. But I'm always trying to, because t- I used to be one of those guys. I used to be one of those fucking meathead fucking like, you know, and then all of a sudden I flip my switch and I'm no longer in, in dragging my life, dragging my emotions or, or carrying this luggage that that would be the weight of the world. And it, it's it's I always want people to have that eye opening moment because I remember when my eye opening moment was in my life. I was sitting in the back of a work truck as a delivery driver, wondering why my life is a piece of fucking shit. Why I'm fucking failing, why I'm this horrible fucking person. Meanwhile, you're living a younger of your dream. Yep. And there's that's, no that's what I'm saying. That in the moment. And, and I had that epiphany in that moment. Like I asked my I always ask this question to myself, why? And when I asked that self why, I actually heard a voice say, it's because you're letting it happen. Yep. And I was like, oh shit, there is a choice. Oh shit, I can choose what I'm doing. <laughs> it's just not an amalgamation of like the world making me do it. You know what I'm saying? Dude, like I, I believe there's something into creating your own universe. Yes. Uh, I've got I've got to see people who are fucking masters of it. And it it seems to be something that's incredible when you get a chance. And there's different levels of it, no doubt. But if man, if me starting to build my own universe was simply when I converted my garage into a gym, 
I had a space. I had a, a space for this outlet, for this obsession, this thing I got to lean into. And then I realized like in that realm, I got to be me. It's safe. It's perfect. It's mine. It makes me happy. It's not for someone else's fucking view. And then that has just continued to grow. And I made clothes I want to wear. I've made coffee I want to drink. I have a, a, a fucking talk show with a studio that that's what mine would look like if I had a studio, right? Like what you have, right? Yep. I fucking love it. I don't want Joe Rogan's studio and I don't want someone else's gym. This is mine. This yep. is why it's styled the way it is. This is why it looks the way it is because it fucking represents what I'm into. And like building your own fucking universe, whether that's have a vehicle you like to drive if you're stuck fucking being in a car. Yeah. It doesn't have to be expensive. Liking a vehicle and expensive are not the same fucking no, thing. No, not at all. There is, because like my, my dream car is not the same as anyone else's dream car. And what right. I like to drive is not what everyone else likes to drive. Even weirder to me, if you don't have a dream car or if you don't have what what ha like I have on my vision board, I know all of these things. I know what my dream things are. I know that if something something terribly goes awry in my life and I end up with a billion dollars, I know what that house looks like. Yeah. I don't have a fucking moat. Yeah. It will not be <laughs> wasted on fitting in in some other neighborhood. It will have a fucking lazy river around it. <laughs> like, you know, uh, it, <laughs> you know, and the, that, that universe building is something that's been hitting me hard that you talk about because I've been building my own small universe now. And I, I've, I've, like I said, I've, I've grown a following, I've grown this podcast and now I'm starting to dip into online business. And, you know, I'm saying I've done all these things and to grow, but the thing is it all started with, I had a couple of weights and then I grew just like you, like you said, you made your space. I've literally built myself my dream gym in my garage with with dumbbells and and squat racks and cable machines and all this fucking crazy fucking shit and just i would right before we even started i just got done getting my good work at it you know so i got a good fucking solid pump in i fucking just absolutely you know I, I love walking on my treadmill i like watching my fucking cartoons you know as, as i'm getting ready to fucking start hitting the gym and then i start plotting and thinking and then because it's my space I can actually start processing. I don't have a vision board, but I have a dream bubble that I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is my aspect. This is what I'm reaching for. And it's like slowly coming together. And that universe building that you've been, you've been talking about and you're talking about and you're promoting and you're telling people like, this is what you need to do. I, I you know, had that realization. Was like, Fuck, I've been doing this. And it's literally drawing things to me in gravity form. Like, you know, uh, I'm doing the, a podcast with three of the biggest fucking, you know, people in the business. I'm fucking bringing fucking like all these companies in and they're like, hey, check this the fuck out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, who the fuck am I? And it, it's, it's just like it's that work and that effort that you put in. And then, you know, like I said, it's my my. I just want to inspire people and I want people to hear and I want people to know, and it's slowly coming together. And like I said, you, everything that you've been doing and like in your last, your last podcast, like I said, I've been, you know, I can only listen to so much at a time, but it, it, it's really inspiring me to fucking hit this shit hard. Well, dude, you know, I, I've, <laughs> when I got done being hurt at that point, I was really desperate <coughs> for, for relief. <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> really desperate for relief and for help. And I kind of like fucking anything's help. I'll do anything. Yeah. At that point, like, you know, that there was a fear and apprehension to psychedelics, to any of these things, any of these things that I had heard about and rumors of stories of people fucking listen. Yeah. <laughs> Blah, 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 or whatever, whatever the rumor mill is that we got from growing up with dare. Yeah. <laughs> that, fucking that. Blatant fucking lie. All the lies. This a, atrocious history that we decided to have in this country of the world. Yep. A fucking horseshit thing. Anyway. um, And so once I had started dabbling in cannabis or anything else that 
that I had been told thus far would ruin my fucking life. Yet every it was putting together the pieces of a lot of stuff I had been missing. And I realized I have been lied to and that no one else is interested in helping me other than me. And so get to fucking work. I'm responsible for me and me alone. That if I if I'm not happy, that is my fucking fault. If I'm not doing what I want to do, it's my fault. I have to set my intent. I can't focus on expectation. If the expectation is to become famous, that involves a bunch of other fucking people to be involved. Yeah. My intent is to put out and create. And to share shit that I give a fuck about. To create a life that has a bunch of meaning to me. And convince people that they're capable of doing the same. Yeah, and that, that's that's exactly what it is. And, you know, get, getting to like, um, you know, talking about the psychedelics and stuff like that. Um, I am actually a big proponent of CBD um, with all my with my injuries and stuff like that. CBD was something that like, you know, I, I, I even smoking smoking weed. I it just I can't be out of control and I'm not out of control, but I just hate the 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 feeling and vision that I get from it. And so it makes me feel this wobbly way, which I, I, I I've never really cared for. But once I actually started taking C and not just a little bit, I can give you, I can give you a solution for it. Yeah. You have to get way better at smoking weed. <laughs> what bear with me here. Yeah. You used to drink. Uh, yeah, a lot. Okay. And I imagine as a big fucker. Yeah. Took a lot for you to get really drunk. Yeah. Extremely drunk. Yeah. But when you started drinking, you could get shit faced and probably overstep that line a few times. Oh yeah, it'd take a forty at a time to get me going. Yeah. So that's all you did with weed. You haven't built any tolerance, and so it goes from zero to way too fuck too fast. Oh yeah, and, 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 and I've built a fucking terrible tolerance <laughs> for myself at the moment. But what it allows, the window that it's really functional for me and helpful yeah. is really wide. That I have to really get on my shit to try to go to the moon. <laughs> oh yeah, no, nah, and, and, and that's the thing too. Is like I I would love to smoke, but I'm the most drug tested person in the world. Oh um, wow. uh, Well, I have a commercial driver's license. I can drive oh, any oh, yeah. any truck, but military grade. I can drive military grade, but I'm not allowed to. Yeah, so what I would my, recommend definitely don't. don't yeah, exactly. So I, so I don't I don't bother with it. Also, to um, the company that I work for because of my appearance. You know, it just it is is what it, I'm covered from tattoos from the profiled. Oh, I'm 100 percent profiled. I never, ever, you know, not expect it every time. You know, I, I've been dragged out of the front window of my car more times than anybody else in by the police. Fucking, you know, right. you know, it, it completely held down. But but also, too, I'm six, five. Yeah, I'm a, look, well, look, I've never had an altercation where a cop has had. I've never had cuffs put on me. I've never been dragged out of a vehicle. Dragged and, out a vehicle in front of my kids' at school, waiting to pick them up. There's, there's no part of that situation that maybe if you handle it differently, it doesn't go that way. <laughs> well, like I say, I look like a very bad person in the eyes of every, even in my own neighborhood that I grew up in. Like no one ever, because I had such a bad reputation just with the police in my own neighborhood of how bad I would beat people up okay. that there was no what's called. But also, too, you know, I've lived in my I don't live in that area anymore. And I even though I don't, I still live in areas where it's like, you know, everything that's on me is a big red flag of don't fuck around with this person, drag them, handcuff them, and then ID them if we choose to. And then once they find out that no convictions, no warrants, no nothing. Then it's let go of the handcuffs be on your way, sir. That's very strange to me. The, well, hey, but uh, like I said, that that this is that that's the guy, environment that I grew up in. I am not trying to fucking say that's not true. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. That is not my reality. Yeah. Well, like, uh, like I said, I, I make a lot of people nervous, and you know, even when like, and I'm just gonna go back to the example when I got pulled out of my car picking up my son from school. Um, he d d just pulled his gun out on me, had my wind hands out the window. Were you speeding? What, what no, was I was sitting. I, I, I had to show up an hour every day to school early, sit in my car, wait for my youngest son to get out of school, who at that, that moment in time was probably like six years old. And, you know, I'm just waiting. 
You know what I'm saying? And then the people behind me were like, hey, this guy looks suspicious, calls the cops on me. Cops like, hey, window, drag, handcuff, throw me on the floor, ransack my car. Then after they do all that ID me, and then after they ID me, they're like, oh, my apologies. And then, you know, unhandcuff, unhandcuff me. But do this right when school, everyone gets out. So everyone's watching this happen. Did you take fucking legal recourse on that? You can't take legal recourses because they didn't do anything wrong in the eyes of the law. There's no way there isn't a lawyer. No, no, you would think so. You would think so because they didn't arrest me. They didn't didn't charge me with anything. They just they they can do a search and seizure thing and like, you know, and be on the way. Like I said, you know, and th- that used to be an everyday thing in my life. It's no longer an everyday thing, but you know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is, but that's the environment that I grew up in, but I've never, ever let it get me down. I've never let it stop me, but it's just something that I've lived with. And one of the things that I've worked my whole life to make sure my kids never exposed to that in that facet or form of like, you know, cause I grew up in the hood having to be tough, having to be fucking hardcore, having to fight, having to do things that I, you know, I get a knock on my door. We need to go. And I've made sure that that's never happened to any, my kids are computer, uh, you know, uh, metal heads, fucking, you know, gamers. They, they're, they're the, the exact opposite of what I am. My oldest son is a hipster and he's like, you know, completely alternative and never once had to do any of the gangster shit that I've ever had to do growing up because I, I made that a fucking like, nope, I need you guys to be better because th- this life is not for you. Yeah, but there's part of you that thinks maybe they should do some hood rat shit. Right oh, now. let me tell you right now, I would <laughs> love for them to do some. But the thing is, is like, 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 like what I'm saying is. If I was to have children, I don't know that I would recommend he work in the strip club and live that life that I yeah. live. But I'm sure it's not mad that I had that chapter. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, me, you know, my, they're they're good. Like my you know, oldest son, he just turned. Tw- <laughs> my oldest son just turned twenty one. He's like, Dad, I'm drinking, I'm smoking, I'm doing all this. I'm like, Look, if you're doing it now. I'm fucking happy for it because I was doing it when I was like 10 years old. I was out there drinking and smoking and running the streets all day long. You know what I'm saying? My mom used to work three jobs and my grandma used to be like, look, come home before your mom comes home. And my mom wouldn't come home until like midnight. So I'd be fucking just running amok all fucking day with my boys. Man, lawless. <laughs> Law ain't for, for fucking like I'm talking about just like. I, you don't, I don't know how many fights, how many fucking like just chases and fucking, you know, gun. Yeah, I, I had a 357 10 feet away from me, point blank, like damn near point blank, shoot me. And it just was like, zoo, zoo, zoo. and every fucking shot missed me, bro. I Jackie chanted over this fucking fence and got away, but then still got fucking caught up by the police because they, they hit me with the car to stop me. Tell you what, everyone's childhood is their own shit. But mine was not as hard as yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I never say my, my life was great growing up because I had sure, family yeah. upon family and parties and all this stuff. It's just like these these uh, small. And then every one of my best friends were all within one block of me. So, like, it was yeah, like, yeah. no, nope, we're going to do some crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. We, we just we did less of those crazy things. We <laughs> we more played basketball. Uh, we did white suburb, suburban things. <laughs> um, all right. At 13 years old, I had a full mustache. Jesus. I used to go to the, at least I remember because I, I was already six one, six foot at 13. All right. I was already like over 200 pounds. And I go, I used to go to the liquor store and I would just walk in. Like we, the first time I did it was fucking crazy. The, but I'd walk in, I'm like, let me get a beer. And so I buy, a, I, I bought a couple of, a couple of, I don't know if you remember 64 ounce oldies. Yeah. So I bought two of them and we buy them. And I walked out at 13 years old with these two 64s and I would go every day to buy beer at this store. And then on my 21st birthday, Hey Ben, I heard it's your birthday. You're turning 21 today. And the guy's face was like, what? I was like, I'd never snitch on you guys. You know what I'm saying? He was just fucking like blown the fuck away. He was like, motherfucker, this whole fucking time. He's like, what, are you 40? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fucking uh. Yeah, we we did some. <clears throat> I grew up in South Louisiana. We did. My childhood was weird in a lot of different ways than yours. I guarantee it. Like um, 
How many alligators have you dealt with? None. Weird. None. Right. Yeah. I've dealt with those shit tons. <laughs> uh, I've grown up and like hunting alligators. We, we did that. So we trapped on land. And one of those weird life experiences I have is basically every summer for two weeks, we alligator trapped and like would pull 160, 130 Damn. alligators out in two weeks. And yeah, like a weird thing that I've like I've done that I like the more and more I realize and travel and meet people because I'm not in my fucking hometown, I realize how cool and unique it is. It's just not there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when you when you're there when you're there for so long at a place, you're like it's normal. And then when you when someone from the outside comes in like, "What what are we doing? What is fucking yeah. going on?" <laughs> but that's one of the points too of why being outside of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. To tie that back in, like with the men's group that we've or not men's group, but the group we've created, like it's, I realize that a big part of what made me were my mentors and whether they knew they were or not. The, these people that I got lucky enough to start meeting at that transition in my life to realize a bunch of stuff was possible. You know, me, me getting a chance to make friends with Kyle Kingsbury, who was yeah. someone that was very open and emotional and had a very different way of looking at things than I did. And I was craving options. And I've always been attracted to like, they're doing something different. What What's going on there? Because the more I was around Kyle and Aubrey and, you know, they were doing a lot of open relationship stuff at the time. It was just a very eye-opening thing to get to see. And lucky enough for me, like I got to be close to it to an extent that yeah. I could see it wasn't bullshit. And not only that, they weren't pussy dudes. Yeah. Right. And because I'm not into that either. I'm not into weird fucking. I'm not into weird fucking passive people. Male. Yeah. Like I like fucking people that know who the fuck they are and know where they want to go. Very direct. Yep. Happy. Yeah. Let's fucking go. I don't want to beat around the bush. Let's yep. be honest with each other. Let's make decisions. And I want you to succeed. You want me to succeed. Fucking a let's do shit. That's what I'm talking about. I don't care what your background is yeah. other than that. And so getting to see those guys and getting to see this community that really felt love-based and not fear-based and allowed people to dream and allowed people to try new things and really care about it as a community was fucking really interesting to see at that time. And to see that it was so different than what I had been brought up on as maybe love is a scarce commodity. And you can only be loved by so many people or love so many people or that when I got introduced to psychedelics kind of realized that all the obligation I had felt in my life, I had put on me. And if I don't want to be doing these things, there's no reason I have to. Yeah. And so I stopped doing things I don't want to do. Uh, or started making progress towards stopping doing things I <laughs> yeah. don't want to do. Right? I didn't just pull the fucking zip cord. Yeah, it, 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 it's a top thing. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've gone through those processes where I feel obligated to do something for somebody, but then just got to points like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to go in this direction. And, you know, I'm not going to lend you money. You know right. what I'm saying? It's, it's, right. it's just, you know, and at this point in my life, I, I am very okay with saying I don't operate out of obligation at fucking all. Uh, and so, Whenever something comes up that I'm at and I get that feeling of like yeah. crabby and blah, 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 blah. I have to remind myself, you don't do anything out of obligation. So you yep. chose to be here, motherfucker. So shut the fuck up and do it because this is where you said you wanted to be. If you yep. don't fucking leave. That's it. You don't owe anyone shit. Fucking walk out. And if you're not going to walk out, be present. Exactly. These are your only two options. We're not going to sit here and fucking pout and make it worse experience for anyone else around us. That shit, that's unfair. And that starts when I don't give a fuck what you want to do and what progress you want to make. As long as it never impedes someone else's good time. Yep. That's and how so, it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm like sitting say, in that situation, yo, that venom spreads out real quick. Fucking leave instead. Yep. Like, well, why, why am I going to sit there and just ruin the whole fucking time when, you know, I'm like, I hey, guess what? I can solve the situation. 
I'm not yep. happy. I'm not, I'm upset. Guess what? It's just time to go. You know what I'm saying? And if those that are around you, they'll, they'll understand, they'll fucking get it. Like, Hey, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know? And I've had, I've had a lot of those experiences doing outside sales for an old job and traveling around and having lunches with obligated lunches. Yeah, for sure. And at this point in my life, I've had enough fucking obligated lunches. <laughs> I, want to eat, I want to eat and talk to people I would like to talk to. I don't have to do it the other way around. Yeah. And again, it's not a fuck you that comes from that. It's the freedom of knowing that anyone I'm talking to is a choice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that gives me the right to decide how I feel about it. And that remember that it was a choice to talk to this person. So be fucking present. Exactly. Be aware and be in it and be giving and be present. And so. You know, it, it, it's just one of the things that that needs to be done. A lot of people don't do that because they just feel like they have to talk. They have to communicate. They have to say hi. They have to do these things. But the thing is, is you know, once, once you figure it out in your head that it's like, I, I, I don't have to. I don't have to. Hey, hey, hi. I'll see you fucking later. You know what I'm saying? Guess what? End a conversation. People will fucking understand. They fucking get it. And I, I do it all the same time. I've cut so many people out of my life because of it's I just don't feel comfortable around you. And it makes just like you said that 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 grumbly feeling of like, oh, I don't want to deal with what they're trying to tell me or what they want to do or what they expect of me. And it fucking drives me fucking insane to deal with it. And it just got to the point where I was like, no, no, like, I guess what? No, well, we, I can't schedule anything. I'm too fucking busy. Understand. You know, I completely understand that shit. Yep. But the thing is when you're present though, that, like I said, that's that choice. You know, I, I have my, uh, my brother right now, he's going through cancer. Like he had stage three, he fucking did to cut half his esophagus, half his stomach out. And I was there present the whole fucking time, even though he's bitching and complaining the whole fucking time, which is understandable. But it's just like, you know, no, brother, this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, man. Fuck. You know, and it's, and it's more to the point of that, like with the being present shit, right? Like, oh, you, know, you don't know what's coming. Yeah, you don't. That, that for me, right? Like, so that that's the essence of the 1612 my my mentorship group is the at 31 when my father had passed away at 62 uh like that's that was the realization of like you're fucking halfway half the ride's over half yeah. over. so that's 1612 weeks that gives me 1612 weeks from that moment in 2014 to accomplish and get done anything I've ever dreamed of. And for me, I am an experience driven person. I like things that make me have more fun experiences. Uh, and so like, that's what it's been built on is about making every fucking, make sure that you're on the gas every fucking week, having those new experiences. And that's, what's keeping you <coughs> alive and growing. I mean, have you ever taken a really long trip? Oh yeah. Right. You come back and you're, you're fucking different. Yeah. You're different from it. And you, and cause you have a new perspective. You literally went somewhere else and changed a physical perspective, which gave you a new one and you come back and nothing's changed. And you realize nothing at all has changed. No one made progress yet. You've had this, life-changing epiphany in some 10 days yeah right so what if you could fill 60 days of your year that way be fucking crazy right well you can you can it just has to be involved when you're awake and having new things going on when you're actually experiencing new stuff that's why on those trips they're so impactful because it's new stimulus. So you have to adapt. You have to grow. That's where you find it. Like, man, find shit you're interested in and fucking nerd out. That's what you spoke. You know, it, I don't know exactly what you're saying. It's because, like, like I said, it, I've been do, going through this whole process of figuring things out. And, you know, like you, you, podcasting, you know, like I, I kind of just did it on a whim. And when I did it on a whim, I kind of just like I, I did a very basic setup 
And then now I've gotten so deep into like figuring out equipment, doing equipment, running equipment, programs, downloads. And it's like, I've never been this nerdy person, but I've been geeking out on like, oh, I just found this new program. I'm doing these new things. I'm fucking, you know, just advancing what I'm doing. And it, when you start nerding out like that and you start gathering this knowledge of programming and, and editing and fucking, it's just like so fucking crazy to me that, that, you know, like that, that I've actually learned this shit because I've never been a technical person. I've always been a fucking nuts and bolts guy. Yeah. Just say, look, man, I, I didn't know, I didn't go to school for video editing or graphic design or any of that. Yeah. I taught myself enough that was able to build the business to where I was able to hire people who were actually good at it. Yeah. And you know, with the podcast thing, as far as like buying equipment or having a studio or doing any of that, I did that because it makes it more fun for me to podcast reason fucking number one, because it made it more fun for me to do it. Yep. Um, and not only that, the other side of like accountability I love that comes from having a nice studio is I'm the weak link. This show is not unsuccessful or successful because of the technical issues. I can't ever say, fuck, if we had better headphones, we'd have more listeners. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'll do it. I'll fucking lie to me. I'll try. Like, oh, if we, our speaker quality is the problem. Yeah, yeah no, you know no. it is. <laughs> I do the same thing. thing. Right? Fuck that. I want the, and so I know it, that I have to get better. And so how do I get better at podcasting? I go be a guest. How do I get better at podcasting? I have more conversations with people that I don't know what they're going to fucking say. Yeah. Goddamn damn fucking true. It, it, it is reps. It is reps. And it, it's going to go right back to, like I said, um, doing the stand-up comedy and and doing doing something that's out of the ordinary, a completely different venture, something that that I would sit in my car, listen to Joe Rogan, him rant about his friends about pod uh, doing stand up comedy, thinking I can do that. And I used to sit there and have real thoughts in my head, like I'm funny, I can do this. That ain't that, all. I gotta do is get up there. And it finally got to the point where I was like, oh shit, I'm really fucking up here. I'm really fucking doing this. And oh my god, I'm getting fucking booked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? dude yeah it's uh even with that right like i look at those guys and like other comedian friends i have is like i have spoke to crowds and i have made people laugh but i am not a fucking comedian i understand the difference yeah <laughs> there I is a I'm huge difference <laughs> yeah i believe i have the capability of being funny but i am not a fucking comedian those guys are fucking ninjas They're terrifyingly good at what they do. And if I ever mistake someone who's good at something, whether that's the high level actors, musicians, comedians, anyone who that has to do the reps, if I ever think that their thing is any easier than me winning a world championship at the Highland Games, I'm doing me a disservice and their whole fucking thing. So realize how hard it is. Yeah. Right, like, it, like fucking good work, dude, and understand how fucking incredible it is if someone masters it. This, it, 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 when you see someone who can craft their their profession, their story, their their passion, and and mold it into something that makes it look so smooth and easy, it's like that's the pinnacle of of performance. You know, what I'm saying I've, I've seen so many people at open mics and at comedy shows just fucking kill it, and then I've how many times I fucking just eaten shit. Just trying to fucking like get these reps in and fucking like, you know, do these shows and fucking drive. And, you know, and it's just like it's so fucking crazy because, like I said, it's just like, you know, this is something I thought I can do. And I stuck to my guns and I started doing it. And then, you know, just a little bit of recognition here and there. And I'm just like, OK, I got this. I got this. I'm still not the fucking I'm still not great. You know, I, my, my appearance completely throws everybody off when I get on stage and they don't know whether to laugh or go check their fucking pockets. <laughs> Fuck, you know, doing the reps, right? And like I every once in a while, I still have mo- I'm, um, I have moments where I'll go like, holy fuck, I did that for a while. And like weird that that is still kind of what's going on. Yeah. And so. Like, I mean, even going back to when I had the bicycle shop. What I liked is we were making some t-shirts and then I liked selling merch for my buddy's band. And like, so that's where the reps came in. Like I knew that I could sell merch. I had an ability to communicate or talk or do sales. Yeah. 
And then, of course, that's what I spent the next fucking 10 years doing professionally, which has translated into I have an ability to communicate. And so which has turned into podcasting and making videos, doing anything else or coaching or, or anything. And so like seeing these long term repetitions play out throughout the course of my thing, it's, it's really interesting to, to look back at and like have these, like I said, look back at a chapter and you're like, fuck, I did that for a long time. And yeah. so that, that time of eating shit, like, I think it's important for people to understand that everyone you've ever admired had that. And so if you want that thing, that's part of the path. So be stoked when it starts happening. Yep. Because even if it's stand up, I imagine it goes a bit like this. You have a couple open mics that you got a bunch of your friends to get to attend. And <laughs> yeah. so super fucking well, but it ain't real. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've got some and there ain't no fucking buddy laugh track. Yeah. And you eat shit. Yeah. Cause uh, that, I don't know how it's many times so I go time. by myself and it's like three people in the crowd and the rest are the comedians and everyone's just kind of just talking amongst themselves as you're doing it. And you're trying to gauge whether you're good or not. You know what I'm saying? Cause that, yep. that's how a lot of them are. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just so fucking reps are so fucking important. You know what I'm saying? From, from training the gym to trying to do bodybuilding, to, to trying to get myself into the fitness industry, to, to putting these reps in for podcasting and then putting these reps in to do stand up fucking comedy. And now I'm putting in the reps, trying to start a new venture. And it's like those reps, they teach you fucking a lot. But, but also the important thing is, especially with say your entire journey thus far, right. And mine as well, since there hasn't been a there yet, we may as well accept there isn't one. Yeah. And so it's worth just going. So cool. The whole thing's just reps. And I can so, live with that. Good man. I'm in, I've enjoyed it thus far. Yeah. I've enjoyed it more. The more I give a shit about the reps. I mean, Terry, no, the reps are the fun part. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because a lot, a lot of people. Through, like even two years ago, man, I like after after my divorce, I, I'm broke. I have some financial responsibility that still needs to be taken care of, and so things are just a, a bit rough. Um, I'm doing seminars for Good Life out of Canada, which is a big chain of gyms. So, like two a month, I'm going to Canada and teaching. I'm teaching essentially like a basics lift, uh, beginner lifting. And so I'm teaching to their personal trainers. Yeah. The love, this was an opportunity I needed to make money that I felt so much imposter syndrome about, despite that I had won and competed around the world. Yeah. I am not a fucking coach. I have never coached anyone, nor have I been a personal trainer nor am I certified in anything. I'm, and I'm also barely educated, but I knew, and I felt this anxiety about it and it meant figure out how to provide value and figure out how to talk about that's the, the thing that is yours. And so it's also, it's one thing if I was in the States and I was going to see people and talk to a Highland games crowd, that's a crowd that knows who Matt Vincent is. Yeah. These crowds that I was speaking at at Good Life, they're not fans. These were people that work for Good Life that get to move up the ladder for taking classes. That's a big difference of who you're going to talk to and what you're expecting for a response. Yeah. And man, going up to those and being able to just hold my point and be able to go through the seminar and work because these got damn stoic Canadians <laughs> sit there and fucking stare dead at me. Dude. It took, I finished the first two of them and I'm like, I have no fucking idea how that went. I have no idea how that went. I managed to time it out and get to the fucking end. Yeah. But I have no concept if that was worth anyone's time <laughs> whatsoever. I have no confidence about it at all. Oh. And then I get a great response from all these people. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. So what I'm was that during this whole thing? <laughs> Someone talk back to me and like, oh, oh. Laugh. So oh my God. And then it oh. continued that way. 
Yeah. And so for two fucking years up until COVID, I was doing these. And it just, it never wasn't that. And so at some point I'm like, you just have to have confidence that they're getting it. Yeah. It hasn't been a problem yet. It's probably okay this time. <laughs> fucking do it. And that's it. Even, even those guys, right? And like what I found important message for them as personal trainers who who I don't have that job. Yeah. I don't want it. I've never wanted it. I've, I, I'd be fucking bad at it. And especially I understand people get shit on a lot for being a personal trainer at some Globo gym. Yeah, big time. Fuck that. Because the truth is those people are such gatekeepers to when when someone like my mom or someone else who's completely fucking out of the wheelhouse doesn't understand lifting, not us elite pricks who fucking already yeah. own gyms ourselves. We're talking about the person who finally wants to change their life. Someone who's finally made the decision that they've had enough, that they want to go in and do something about it. They've been brave enough to walk through the fucking door and talk to that person. Yep. They're way more a gatekeeper to changing people's lives than I am. Is it true? You know what I'm saying? Because it's it, 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 a fucking important job. Super fucking important job. And even with, with you know, talking about this, one of the things I'm doing is I'm going to be record, recording a sequence of videos of me just demonstrating not just the basics, but basics of like the right way to stand, the right way to position yourself, the right way to hold your hand, breathe, but hear it and see it from a gym bro, a gym person, a regular fucking person that's like, Look, I, cause uh, you know, I saying personal training. I, you, when I was training myself to do bodybuilding, I actually ended up recruiting a, gr a crew of guys that would just show up at my time to just work out with me and do what I was doing. And then I ended up finding out that I love training. I love teaching people how to do this and not just teaching. I want to work out with them. I want to have them in my group. I want them, <laughs> Hey, adjust this, change this chest up, shoulders back, breathe. Look what you're doing. Look at the mirror, you know, all these basic things. And it's like every one of them physically changed in my group. I literally had a crew of bodybuilders of friends and people that ended up becoming my brothers just because they saw what I was doing and wanted to do it. And I never once ever told him, you have to pay me. No, I have to, look, you just show up. Here's my time. This is my schedule. I train six days a week. Uh, I, you know, I was training four hours a day. You guys show up and guess what? You're going to get the wealth of knowledge. And I would tell people, look, once you've learned what you want to learn, you're no longer going to need me. You can do what you're going to do. The only thing is I'm here to just point out to you like, hey, Guess the fuck what? This is what you do. This is what you're doing wrong. And let me help you do it. Let me show you how to do it. Let me work with you. And then once he started working with me, I was like, oh my fucking God, everyone's fucking physically different and emotionally different. And like the mindset of them are no longer the mindsets that they had when they came in. And I love that. That was my passion. You know what I'm saying? COVID hit, you know, that's, it, it is what it is. But that's like what I want to do with my life is to not just hold it but like no free take it use it fucking add it to your life because guess what it, it just takes a simple encouragement to change people and that's what i love yeah. yeah and i mean man as long as you getting to do that fills your cup lean into whatever allows you to do that exactly if that means it's transitioned from one thing to the next to the next to the next whatever keeps that cup full and you know that's honest with you and you can stay passionate about it keep running and that's it and that's like i said it's, it's, it's just what i didn't even know that was a passion until it started like happening and when it started happening i was like fuck man i really well, feel fucking good i i hear so many times that people don't don't know what their passion is and i get and i get that too i get the the thing and so like for me in that situation then why aren't you investigating like, if you don't have a life's passion, your life's passion should be finding your fucking life's passion. Goddamn fucking truth. And it sure as shit isn't doing the exact same thing every day. That's not how it works. Yeah. I mean, watch new information on TV. Pick new shows to watch. Watch documentaries. Do a bunch of random shit until something sparks. And if nothing else, enjoy the experiment of eliminating shit you're not interested in.
it's it, it's something that I've always preached in every one of my podcasts. It's like you can find it. You just got to work for it. You got to look for it. You got to do these things. One of the things I didn't know I was ever going to be good at was axe throwing. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, my God, I got a passion for axe throwing. So we fucking do axe throwing. And it's like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? It's like there's just so many different things. And I'm like, I just want people to find passion, have passion, and then know what it feels to live with that passion. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, man. I know. I know what it's been for me. And and again, like that's been the consistent thing. Like if I look back at everything of like what's been consistent, what have I always had since it switched on? And it's been I've had something that I am completely unreasonable about. You have to be. I have something that I'm completely unreasonable about that I have to do. Yep. That ha- that's how it has to be, though. Like people and, and don't perhaps more than one. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. Even with that, even more than one. Like I have things I have to physically do. I got to get up. I got to walk on my treadmill. I got to, you know, I got things. I got to sit down and have time with my dogs. I got to sit down and like, like I have routine things that this is something I love. And I, I'm going to spend my time doing it, whether it's a little bit of time or a lot of time, whatever my day allots for me to do, I, it's going to get knocked out the fucking park because I want to sit down and enjoy what I want and what I want to do with my life. Yep. That's it. Um, no one else gets a vote. Nobody gets a, no one gets a say. So one, one of my sayings is you're number one. That means I don't get a vote in anyone else's. Exactly. Then is the yeah. rule. Dems the rules. <laughs> I have a saying, and I don't believe in hypocrisy on any standpoint. No, you can't have any. You can't have any because, like I said, if, if people, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I'm like, there's no yo no, there's no you know. Guess what? I'm gonna enjoy what I love. I want people to have the full ability and right to govern their themselves and their body and their mind to whatever they want. That's it. That is it. <sighs> You know, they brother, this was a great thank you for coming on. I appreciate you joining the show. I appreciate you just spending your time with me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, it was, like I said, I feel good after this because, like I said, I have so many things that I want to do. And, you know, you've kickstarted a few of those things off. And I'm same, fucking same. like, same, same. I have a ton of shit I want to do. <laughs> it's, all it's right. A fucking obnoxious <laughs> listen, uh, but it's, it's more and more fun, especially the more and more I realize that since I've accomplished everything I've dreamed of thus far, I should probably aim bigger. What you got to do. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. what, what we all got to do. You know, go, goals are reached, goals are obtained. But the thing is, is there's always more work to be done, more reps to push, more reps to push out. So one of the things right now I'm thinking about as far as just my my training. Yeah. Like right now, and it is the difference I see between me and where I want to be in the next five years is that guy five years from now has to be able to manage more stress than I can manage now. And so that's what I'm doing now. I manage, I'm working on doing things that are fucking hard, whether that's managing doing the cold tub every single day, no matter what the fucking rules are, or getting in the sauna and spending that time and being disciplined to listen to podcasts and things. Because if I'm not willing to do those things that manage and make my life better, to manage stress better, to work on breath work, to control my machine better, then I don't really want whatever that is in the future. Yeah. You don't get both. I can't say I want that but not willing to fucking die for it. And you have to be willing to die for it because that's how hard you got to push it. Well, good. You know? I'm going to fucking die anyway. We're all going to fucking die. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Really, that's the point. Like I'm fully aware of that. Yeah. We all have a time mark. We don't know when it's going to fucking be. There's not a risk to trying any of this. That's <laughs> at all. You know what I'm saying? It, it, Both it, stories it's, end the same way. They all, you know, everybody's story ends the same way, but it's, it's, you know, it's the, the reps traveled and the reps done and not just, like you said, reaching that goal in five years, reaching these things. I, I know what I want in five years and what I want in five years is to be able to work for myself and not just work for myself, but my work work for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I 
you put in these times, you put in these efforts. It's because I want to be able to not just travel and see the world and do all these things. Like, no, I want to spread my message around the world and understand and people get it and fucking bring those kind of people together. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and, and managing stress, it, 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 it comes with the territory. But the thing is, is you never know what you can handle until you start handling it. And you get better at anything the same way with reps, you adapt. I mean, yep. there's no way four years ago I could handle the shit that I'm doing now. I have stuff right now that I'm super fucking scared of and I'm super stressed out about. Good. <laughs> fucking good. That means you're awake and you're fucking nervous. You like, see anxiety it. is not a negative thing. Anxiety is a fucking flashlight that says that's probably a thing I should look at. Yeah. And that, and that, that is it. We should probably grow. No, we all need to grow. And, like, and growing or, is like, it's so fucking difficult, man. Or, or, or admit you're okay with exactly what you're doing and don't bitch yeah both are totally acceptable to me i'm not saying you have to fucking live like a lunatic i want you to live however the fuck you want to if you want to eat ice cream sit on the couch and be nine million pounds Mm. i don't give a fuck yeah i don't have any interest in saving you i will never want you to succeed more than you will but i want you to do whatever it is that makes you happy and that's what you're supposed to do, you know, but everyone's level of happiness is different. You know, like one of my, my level of happiness is my success and the happiness that I have, that I can see the fortune around me of my kids smiling, my wife happy, my dogs fed full and laying down in front of me. And like my level of success is, is the comfortability of knowing that my work is paying off. You know what I'm saying? And that that level of success, once I reached it, I'm just like, oh, my God. Now it's like, no, I need more. I need, I'm venturing out. You know what I'm saying? Taking myself out of the comfort zone of, like, putting in effort towards something that scares the fucking life out of me. Because guess what? I have a secure job. I have a union job. I have a retirement job. I have something that once I fucking, if I work this out and put in my time to work and just do this mundane eight hour a day job that adds no stress. It is not physically laborious. It is something that I just show up to the and clock in and clock out. And if I leave that comfortability, what is the future to hold for me? Once I walk away from something like that, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's the, that's what I, I see. What, what, is selling, what is selling your dreams worth? So then that that's exactly it. And that's exactly like, I, I, that's, I'm, that's it, right? Like you, that's what you're, you're not choosing that, that job thing. What you, what you're choosing is stagnation for a period of time that you can't have back that you sold to them Yep. For this amount of money. And if that's okay with you, fucking a. Yeah. I, I, I again, into it. If you're yeah. stoked, I'm stoked. There's no That's right true. or wrong answer to how there, there is none, right unless you're unhappy. Yeah, and saying, and that I'm at that point where I'm not unhappy, and I'm not happy. I'm like, I know I can do more, so now I'm stepping out of that that zone of no, no, no. I can see myself walking away from this because there might be something at the end of this for me that I really fucking want. But you and can operate. It, you can operate in present gratitude. And want more. Yeah. And that's really fucking important because otherwise it's this fixated and you get this, you, you get stuck in comparison and you get stuck in this comparison to where I should be, or I've seen them do this, or they've had a podcast this long. Why aren't I here? Yo, you're where you fucking are and your progress and your journey is only yours. That's it. The more that you can stay present for that and stay present and gracious, the fact that you have made a choice and you are moving towards something else and all you have to do is figure out your puzzle but you can stay stoked in current gratitude for all of it along the way of still enjoying the growth process of learning that is it you know what i'm saying like i said it's it's like that growth process learning is like it, it's it's i always i'm always looking deep and when I mean deep, I'm always in this process of thinking of like, what's my next move? And I need to make the next move. I'm always constantly planning and, and showing and, and setting myself up with things. And one thing I always do is I, I start speaking what I'm thinking because I can think it all day and it's going to blow right back, right out of the back of my mind. 
But if I start talking about what I want to do, it all of a sudden starts manifesting. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then I'll, I'll talk to my wife about it too. She, she's my, my, my idea wall where I bounce things off of her all day. And she's one of the people that I can always like talk to and be like, Hey, what do you think? And she's all, Oh, that sounds good. Or like, Hey, what about thinking it like this? And, and when I get that bounce back, it really helps me get the ball rolling. And it's just like, you know, the more I speak it, the more I talk about it, the more I start walking towards it, the more it starts being a possible idea. Of course. Of course. I mean, there's plenty of statistics that show just even with like, simple stuff of taking accountability, like even voicing something out loud gives it a higher percentage chance of happening. And then telling it to a second person ups that percentage again. And then actually like writing it down and having a plan and improves that percentage to like 65% and having a plan to be held accountable to puts it at like a 96% chance of success. Yeah. And so like, okay, if that's the truth, fucking use that system. Like just, just beat yourself into it. You know what I'm saying? Like say, yeah. okay, fuck it. Whether I agree with this or not, I'll just ride out the 96%. And that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't see my computer screen, but I have all these sticky notes of ideas, shirts, internet, website. You know, I got, I got all these things that are reminders for me. I got notepads full of shit that I've written down and it's like, yes, (laughs) yes. You know, my phone's full of memo notes. Exactly. (laughs) I'm a lunatic. (laughs) Yeah. That's what it takes to succeed sometimes. (laughs) I, I love it. Like thus far in my life, not thus far, but at whatever point, this side of my personality, I always, this is the side that did really poorly in school. And so this was the part that I really wanted to get control of. Yeah. But the more that I've leaned into letting this creative side that works at whatever fucking pace it wants to, and, and building a life that gives it the freedom and in a space that it wants to be in, like building out dope in this uh in gym and podcast studio and now I work up here during the day like an office. Yeah. And so I have a place that I can go from working doing creative stuff to immediately on the treadmill or in the sauna or in the cold to I can box, I can move around, I can push a sled. It's like I'm getting to walk around in my brain. Yeah. And and solve problems all day that way. And so like for me to want to stay in this creative space, I, I've learned what it takes for me to do it. And I've been able to just push into building what allows me to be more of that. Yeah. That seems to be something that I'm able to monetize. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And then that that's like the, the monetization part is what I've been working on. Like I, you know, this podcast does pay yeah, some it's pay, it's real but it's, yeah, it's a real, and it is internet money is the most craziest wild west fucking shit that I've been learning to deal with. It's so fucking insane. Yep. You know, it's and, fucking and, insane. And and it's and it's a very changing place at a rapid rate. Yeah. Every day is a day to day. It is indeed. And I, I think we're gonna see a very interesting time, right? Like if we can if we can look back 10 years and then we look forward 10 years. And so if we're 2032. Yeah. 2052, 2062. And we look at this gap, this 20 year gap of say 2020 to 2022. Yeah. Those of us who figured out the social media thing early enough have a spot. Yeah. And this wasn't a thing when we started, we accidentally became it. Yeah, and it's it's fucking got it's so and, weird. But that that can't ever be again, right? No. Because because this is now a profession. And it's a real profession. Yeah, it's a legitimate, you know, social media influencer title. Yeah, it, it's it's a fucking real thing. I felt really weird about saying that's what I am for a long time, but I, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. That's what I do for a living. I create. I still still feel weird about saying it. Yeah, yeah. I I create. Yeah. So, all right. So even question that, right? Like how much are you holding yourself back by not being able to say that that's what I want? That's it. 
you either have a negative connotation built on some other fucking idea. But if that's what you want to be, be that man. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking own it. Yeah. Be honest with yourself. Don't don't play any of that half committing failure to it. And and it is fucking like I said, it is it's a wild fucking place. And we're going to look back at the beginning of social media and the and the brands that got built and the money they got made. Yeah. And how it got used. It was the fucking wild west because there weren't any restraints or yeah. algorithms when we all got in. Exactly. And they realized they realized due to us being a problem that they have to build in things. Yeah. Limiters. <laughs> yeah. That they have to do things to protect people. They have to do things because we're pieces of shit. Right? Like we're the ones who had to get algorithm changed. We're the ones that troll each other's comments and fucking post negative stuff, yep. not Instagram. How we feel about those platforms is not their responsibility to fucking save us from us. Exactly. And so that's all been weaponized against us. Yeah, it's big we time live weaponized. In the troll culture. And so we're going to look back at this time before things got any type of regulations on it. It's the fucking wild west of the <laughs> internet. 100 fucking percent. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's different it is. Than, than what Bill Gates did with Microsoft. Now, I don't mean like fucking hate brand is what Bill Gates. And I, and I know what you mean, though. I just mean internet boom. Yeah, internet. But the, the, like I said, the he, explosion he that it had. And then they realized, holy fuck, he's accomplished how much? We have to put some regulations here. Exactly. They're getting too much, too much feed. There, like that internet thing. Now, let me tell you right now, it's 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 so fucking because like um, I just recently got demonetized off of Instagram, and not even not wow. even like an, an explanation, just like nope, just enabled now. I'm like, the fuck happened there? You know what I'm saying? Or or and then um, like uh, TikTok just recently got, uh, banned me there too, and I had to restart from scratch there, and it's just like, it's like, now, now, let's be honest here. What do you mean no reason? Well, let me tell you right now, uh, they, I get tagged from posts four to five years ago. Uh -huh. So that they'll be like, hey, you've got infringed because this picture from 2020, 2018 now violates our community guidelines. I'm like, well, it didn't violate it then. So why does it violate it now? You know mm. what I'm saying? So, or like, hey, this picture shows, you know, um, you know, uh, violence. I'm like, it's a picture of someone cutting a bagel with their finger in the middle. And sure. so that breaks community guidelines, but that was four years ago. So why are, why are the community guidelines now offended to that picture that has no comment, no hashtags, no nothing. And that's, you know, and the point, or like, a, let's say I reshare a video well, and then well, I get, because. You know, because they own a business yep. that you agreed to play by whatever fucking rules they say. Go. Exactly. Every time there's an update. Again, you agreed. Yeah. You're not a victim. Not a victim. This was their business. If you don't like it, you're welcome to not be there. Exactly. But, you know, I'm still, still there. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. Right. Yeah. So it's either figure out how to work. Yep. Or, or, or leave. Yeah, no, no, and, 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 and that's and exactly. Having, and what I mean by that, I'm not saying that they're fucking right or this doesn't suck. It's fucking. Oh, yeah, 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 no, I, I always think it is what it is. People, yeah, politically, personally, fuck you people. Yeah. But as someone who's trying to build their thing, you only have to look at it as the puzzle you're trying to figure out is how to operate within those fucking walls yep. to get your thing out. Exactly. That's the game. That is, a, 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 it, it's, it's figuring out like, um, like even to like, um, I just, just recently got a lot of functions and restrictions taken off of me because I, for a while, if I posted a picture and I posted like hashtags, links, comments, or descriptions in the picture, it would automatically flag it. So I ended up finding out a way where I can just post the picture wait 20 minutes, go back, and then just add it in through an edit, and it would stay and be perfectly fine. But th th that's the way I had to figure out how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there there's back ways to do everything. The thing is, until they figure out how to stop me, I just keep doing what I'm going to do. But, it's like NASCAR. Yeah. 
There's, well, there's ways around like it. Like cards. Everyone's just trying to figure out a workaround until they bring out the next set of rules. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, and like even with um, and even with TikTok, um, I used to do this gym saying, see that, don't do that. And so it'd just be a, a video or a picture of someone doing something they shouldn't be doing that is just completely ridiculous. And then I like I got flagged for bullying. And I'm like, I'm physically in that same manner. That's exactly how I said it. I'm like, well, it is what it is. I can't do those videos on TikTok no more. So I only put them on Instagram. But, you know, it, it's just it's like those small things, you know, like uh, um, I just did an Instagram video of uh, a bull hitting a guy that ran through a building and it has the ultra instinct sound from it from from Dragon Ball Z. And that got flagged. And it's like less than seven seconds. <laughs> like it is what it is. Yeah, there you go. I, I no, no, know. trust me. Hey, I, I, I've been with doing Instagram and and Facebook and all this stuff for so fucking long that I've learned learned the algorithms, the workarounds, and I live in the Bay Area where Facebook and Instagram is. <laughs> and so, you know what I'm saying? I, I've had friends that work there do these things. They're like, "Hey, try it this way. Hey, do it this way." I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool." Cheat. I mean, I'm like you said, we're we're learning how to work the system the way they set it up. That's it, man. That's it. Or yeah. choose not to fuck with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, currently, right now, like other other progress for me is, yeah, I don't know what five years from now I'll be forty three. How interested am I of doing social media at forty three? And if I have to say, have I lost any interest in it in the last two years? There would be some part of me that says, yeah. So I would imagine it isn't coming back. Oh yeah. May as well start making plans now to hook that guy up so that if he's not interested in doing this, yeah, who's not? Here. So deciding to fuck around with some real estate and deciding to build some online, like some actual community, yeah, feels like the right thing where I actually get to deal with and work with people. And uh, like I said, man, it, it's been cool kind of realizing that there's this group of people out there that didn't weren't part of athletics and weren't part of the gym that still were in the bar scene I was in that were listening to different music and weren't into fucking pop punk and weren't yeah. into fucking top 40 and weren't at booty shaking club that we were guys in bands and fucking grungy dirt bags and you know guys that ended up working in tattoo parlors instead of doing other shit and so, like, once those people are interested to start trying to take care of themselves, there's not a lot of routes that feel real comfortable because that group isn't one that does. Yeah. And so, I don't know, man, having a place for some emotional talk and some fucking honesty and then willingness to actually want to get better and then not feel weird about wanting to get better because the people around you don't. Like, fucking have a home, man. Yeah. Now, when you when you create that base and you create that universe and, and you have that gravity towards that, it, everyone propels up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants to see up. I've been in too many so to to toxic die. circles where it's like, no, nope, hold everybody down. I'm like, no. And then when you cut that out and you realize it and you see it, it's like all of a sudden everyone's growing. Everyone's successful. Everyone's doing what they want to do. And the the feeling of seeing that around you is the fucking just the shit. If if real fucking easy way to decide if you're in a group of people you should be with or not is everybody pointing at and bitching about stuff about anything yeah or everyone's bitching about something or other their job their life their this their that the dinner the drink this other person they saw at work the 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 drive in the weather the way the buttons on their fucking phone work yeah broken is it always something that is a ugh, an ugh. everything uh, else mouth is a fucking something's wrong an alarm a flag or are you around people who are sharing ideas of what they're going to fucking do and yep. what their plans are are they fucking actionable are these people who take steps in their own fucking life to get out of their way oh, yes. If you're in the first group, start finding new fucking friends. Congratulations, you just recognized it. Now get the fuck away. Okay. <laughs> Quickly. Peace That's out. It. You're not missing out. I promise. They'll still be doing that. 
anytime you're bored. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It, when you, <laughs> when you have that, that nostalgia feeling, Oh, I miss my buddies. And then you're like, everyone's still sitting in, sitting on the couch, watching TV, complaining about their job. Still at the same bar, still at the same bar. They're all just fatter. Yep. And that's the fucking wow. truth. Not, God, into not into it. Well, Hey, live any chapters. Yeah, and it's all about starting them new chapters. So, you know, thank you for your time. And um, for everyone listening, you know what the fuck's up. And guess the fuck what? We'll see y'all motherfuckers on the next one. Fuck. Always living. Always living. Always living. Always living. Always living.